in telegeography. He will speak about the role of Latin America in the international connectivity market. So welcome, Peter. A big round of applause for him. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to be here at LACNOG. I'm Peter Wood, and I work in telegeography, a consultancy from the international telecom market. Is it okay if I speak in Portuguese? So we will now continue with the slides. I will speak of the role of Latin America. And I made a mistake over here because I forgot to include the Caribbean. So the role of Latin America and the Caribbean in the international connectivity market. Now, here I have the points that I will be covering today. Basically, we'll be speaking about bandwidth and the subsea cables in the Tasha community. We work with domestic and other types of connection. We're also speaking about submarine cables, their main routes, in addition to the price levels in the market. We work quite a lot with IP traffic, transit. We're going to speak about internet bandwidth, the main hub cities, as well as of other key elements that affect the content providers, the cloud regions, the data centers, and IPDT, and many more. This is to show you the following. I think telegeography is a product. I've seen this in different presentations, and I'd like to congratulate you on this because I saw I saw you use this content. This shows all the active submarine cables that are connecting the entire world. You can use this map if you wish. It is available in submarinecablemap.com. And all the routes you see over here contain information. You can see which is a company who owns it who provides the materials and what year each cable was installed. Now, let us play a game now. I would like you to interact. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to show this to you. And you'll have to try and guess the answer. Let me start with the active cables in Latin America. Try and guess which are these cables. This is a first clue. It's more than 7,300 kilometers long, a maximum capacity of 100 terabits per second. I'm going to show you some of the options. You needn't guess without having any cues. This cable reaches several cities. These landing stations include Arica, Chile, and Puerto San Jose in Guatemala. It was launched in 2021. It is owned by America Mobile and Telxius. So let us see. Option one, Ella Lynx. Option two, Seabras one. And the third option is SPSC Mistral. And there's a fourth option, which is Tanat. What do you think? Number three, let's see. Exactly, that's correct. Congratulations, you get one point. So as you can see here, this connects Guatemala with different points in Latin America on the West Coast. This is an example of several cables that were launched recently in Latin America and the Caribbean. This is from 2021. <coughs> Here we have a list of examples. LA Link has is been since 2021, and I have similar capacities, more than 100 terabits per second. Then we have Curie from 2020. Sale is also from 2020. And you will see, you can see that in 2022, we have no new international cable connecting Latin America. This is now changing in 2023. You will see this shortly. Here we have a couple of examples. Pratt, a bit smaller. Brusa connects Brazil and United States, and not Africa and Brazil. And here we have the map. You can choose several routes and then purchase whatever you wish. So here we have the same information as in the list.
So, here, the list that I was just showing you represents the same cables in the map. As I mentioned earlier, there are very different uh, uh, recent examples. And a very important thing is that there is a range of uh, different types of routes that are demanded where we have investment and how Latin America and the Caribbean get connected to the rest of the region and the rest of the world. We can see here that there are cables that connect only some places in Latin America, several connect with the United States, with both uh, coasts, uh, the east and the west of the United States. In many of them, there is some more traffic. We're going to talk about this. The link connects with Europe, and we have two that connect Brazil and Africa, too. So uh, this topic is something that includes many different interests by connecting South America, but we also have Latin America and the Caribbean uh, connected to the rest of the world because there are different ways that uh, historically are not too frequent because generally everything uh, used to connect with Miami, but that has changed a lot in recent years and I'm sure it will continue to change. Now let's see what will happen in the future. The same, but with a cable that uh, doesn't exist but is being planned. Let me give you the first hint. This system will connect four countries with two branching units. The, the second uh, uh, hint is that the second cue is that this cable will reach a city that is in the United States and there are, where there are no international cables. It will be the second cable of Latin America and the, and the uh, of this owner, this U.S. Latin America cable. This owner already has one and it's planning the second and they will have 16 fiber pairs. So the capacity will be very good. And uh, they all, the uh, cable is expected to be ready by early next year, 2024. So that's the estimate. Now let's see what the options are. Do you know what the options are? The first one is CN1, then Gold Data 1, Deep Blue 1, and Fermina. Uh, here I'm told that there are four. There, what about the rest of you? Yes, it's four, Fermina. It belongs to Google, and it's very interesting because it will um, uh, Meadow Beach, uh, Myrtle Beach in South Carolina will uh, become a very important city in terms of uh, connectivity. It will be connecting with Brazil, Argentina, and uh, with Punta del Este. And uh, so it's it's a uh, Mercosur. It's uh, a route that has a high traffic demand. Further on in this presentation, I'm going to talk a bit more about the OTDs that have a, a very important presence uh, in Latin America. They are developing many cable projects that represent what's happening in the region. There's very good uh, investment on infrastructure so that Latin America and the Caribbean may become a very strong region for this market. There are many uh, uh, cables uh, um, th that have been uh, checked and there are no new ones, but some are being planned. There are many issues uh, that uh, cost delays, etc. But there we see that there are several sub-regions in Latin America and the Caribbean that have a high demand and are, are very interested in uh, these projects. Arimao in Cuba, Fermina of Google will be ready in just a few months. Then we have Deep Blue One in the Caribbean, Suriname, Guyana. Then we have TAM One that is, uh, uh, belongs to Transamerica's fiber. Then we have Carnival submarine network that will connect the United States, Mexico, and Florida specifically. And then we have Gold Data One um, and Amex 3 Tecal that will recreate one of the routes that's about to be completed. I think that that would be the key thing, that there are many systems in Latin America and the Caribbean that are reaching the end of uh, their lifespan from an economic point of view. There are many systems that could continue to operate physically, but economically they are no longer viable. So uh, each system is in a different situation. But 
the typical thing is to consider that situation. A company, for instance, may decide whether it will make sense to continue with a technology, with an old technology system, or whether it's time to invest in new technology with a greater capacity that will enable them to work uh, meeting the demand standards for that specific route or in a specific route. Now, let's see. Uh, oh, there's a lot of data about this. Let's look at the data of uh, the uh, traffic pattern between the different regions. Now, let's try and guess a route. Uh, let me give you the first uh, queue. It has 16.7 terabits uh, of uh, bandwidth internationally. That's what they used uh, in 2022. That's one of the most recent information from one country to the other. The, it has a 42% CAGR, that is the aggregated growth of, from uh, 2018 to 2022. So it grew quite, the demand grew quite a lot, the demand for bandwidth in this specific route. Then considering all the routes of Latin America with the United States, this is the one that has the third highest bandwidth in uh, 2022. Here we have the different uh, choices, Chile, United States, they're all with the United States. Mexico, United States is the second, Colombia, United States, and the fourth one, Brazil and the United States. So what do you tell me, one, two, three, or four? I think that this one is not too difficult, but nobody's playing. So let's see, the right one is one, Chile, United States. And this is interesting because, as I mentioned earlier, here we have a chart, and this is number one in this list, um, Brazil, the United States. There are many, there is a lot of investment here, and there are many uh, reasons for that. ODTs are very interested in developing this content market. Now, how can we see this in this chart? Between Brazil and the United States, there's quite a significant bandwidth, but it is maintained the same. Then with Brazil, we also have a connectivity between Mexico and the United States, the second bar. But these are the countries with the highest demand, and we can see that the patterns vary a lot. It's not, it's, there's no clear pattern between Chile and Peru. There is quite a high growth, but there is still capacity that is low as compared to the rest. Argentina and Brazil, that's another uh, bar that has similar characteristics. The level of growth is quite high. The, inter, uh, the uh, demand between the different countries in Latin America. However, in spite of all that, from our point of view, connectivity with the United States continues to be the key point, and uh, it's uh, the grounds for everything. So here I wanted to show you information of the routes, but seen in a different way. Here we have the bandwidth uh, and data, the international bandwidth in Latin America. We have almost 200 terabits per second authorized bandwidth in Latin America, authorized uh, internationally in 2022. That is uh, what you see in the last bar. And we see that uh, there's a steady growth because this, from 2021 to 2022, there was about a 40% uh, growth, 39% to be more uh, accurate. In the last five years, it was about 36%. That rate and so and the growth was steady and high if we compare this uh, versus other global regions we see that Latin America is growing very uh, rapidly it's a we have a very steep curve as I mentioned earlier from 2018 to 2022 the growth rate was about 36 percent however now uh, growth uh, is uh, occurring faster but it's it's quite impressive now let's guess a country, guess the country. In 2022, the country had 74 terabits uh, used internationally uh, bandwidth. The uh, CAGR rate was 34% uh, from 2018 to 2022, and it's nearly double the bandwidth of the next uh, highest country. 
What country is it? Let's see the choices. Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, and Mexico. What do you think? One, two, three, or four? Some people have said uh, two. I see many proud Brazilians. Yes, precisely. That was Brazil. And here I bring you uh, the, uh, a picture of the Brahma beer to celebrate. I hope nobody prefers a Scott beer. Now, here you have other data. We see Brazil with the largest market. And this is the key international connectivity market with Latin America with quite a high demand. And we can observe the international bandwidth that is used uh, in the country. And as we've seen <coughs> in the case of the route patterns, each country has a different situation with regard to the growth rate. Mexico is quite high and it's growing a bit faster than Brazil, or at least that's what we've seen in the last four years, but there are smaller countries that have even higher rates. Ecuador and Guatemala, for instance, the demand compared to with Brazil, Mexico, and Chile is not so high, but they're growing quite a lot. Now, let's switch gears. I work quite a lot uh, with uh, growth. Uh, um, uh, uh, of several things. It shows the last three years, uh, we show the prices of uh, the route uh, of a wavelength. Uh, we see the wavelength prices. <coughs> and we use a weighted median, and that's uh, the measurement. So it's uh, the median of the weight of the price in the market. In the second quarter in 2023, that's just a few months ago, this is the most recent information that we have. The most common price for 100 gigas was $18 million US dollars. And from 2020 to 2023, that price dropped by, uh, that's, 27%. And the cost per kilometer averaged about 0.03 US cents per kilometer in the second quarter 2023. Very often, this route is uh, described as the main route of Latin America. These are the choices Bogota, Miami, Dallas, Mexico City, Miami, Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires, Miami. What would be the main one? Let's see. It would be number three, Miami, Sao so Paulo. It has quite a lot of traffic, as Brazil has a lot of demand in terms of infrastructure. It has many cables. And more specifically, Sao Paulo, Santos, Praia Grande get connected with uh, Florida. So in green, that is the price of Miami, Sao Paulo, and there you have the rest of the routes in Latin America. I, I joke, uh, saying that there are very few things that are that are true in life, including death and taxes. But here you can see another. Almost all the routes, at least in Latin America and other regions, um, with. Uh, uh, similar economies, the prices continue to drop. There are many things that contribute to that, including the uh, local regulations, infrastructure, capacity, and Miami Sao Paulo is a very good example of that. They have a healthy environment to invest uh, that promotes investment in infrastructure, and they have. Uh, quite good cables for connection and the two points in uh, what uh, what customers have in the cloud with high demands and there are many common uh, companies that are active in those markets by Yemen, Sao Paulo and they are succeeding in uh, being covered. So at present, well, in addition to Buenos Aires, Sao Paulo, there are other many other routes that uh, exceed uh, 100 gigas of uh, wavelength that are uh, 
typically shown, uh, sold, it's the market is getting larger and larger. And we see that as demand increases, there's a product that is more typical that is sold better. That's what we use to measure the behavior of the market because we, we can compare all the routes. Mexico has quite a few connections with the United States. It's a bit different because its connectivity very often comes uh, it's, uh, uh, through the land, so it doesn't work exactly the same. But between Dallas in Texas and Mexico City, there are companies that are quite cheap. And these have the same factors. There's a lot of competition. For example, in the second quarter this year, there's a typical company for one 12,000 giga was very cheap. And from all these routes over here, these are the most important ones. So between 20 and 23, the average prices dropped 28%. And this is very fast. In fact, a 15% drop would be a normal, healthy drop, something that historically was quite common. That There's a lot of pressure on investing in infrastructure. And in general, the dynamics of the economies in the region have provided an environment in which prices drop very rapidly. Now, this is not the case for every market, but added up, this is quite a reality. Now, let us now look at IP transit. Let us see how these networks connect. We're going to continue with the guessing game. We're all winning here. Now, the first tip is 8.5 terabits international internet bandwidth in 2023. You have to guess the route. The peak utilization was up to 29% of its capacity. This route has the highest total bandwidth route in Latin America. And between 2019 and 2023, the added growth percentage was 49% for average traffic. A further fact is that the average traffic was only 57% of the highest route. Guess the route. These are the options, Miami, Rio, Dallas, Mexico City, Miami, Sao Paulo, and Dallas, Monterrey. One, two, three, four. Nobody tries to guess? Nobody wishes to try and take a go? The answer is Dallas Monterrey. And this is quite an atypical route, but it does quite a high demand, I mean, between Mexico and the United States. And these are the cities that are closest to the border, and these are the cities that have been growing in terms of connectivity. These. Dallas and Mexico City have quite a high demand, but the investments in data centers and in the cloud have contributed to environments in Mexico that leads to these situations. This is a map we use to show globally the internet bandwidth between regions. We see that between United States and Latin America, There is quite a lot in terms of capacity. This is important because when there is a demand, there are needs to for investment in infrastructure. This also shows a pressure on growth. Only for the Latin American Caribbean region, we can see this similar picture. And as I mentioned before, there is a lot of growth in terms of traffic in Latin America. But the connection with the United States is still dominant. In the case of Brazil and Mexico, they have the highest international internet capacity, 45 and 35 terabits per second, respectively. And the same happens with uh, transport with smaller countries and with more limited, limited transit capacity. The situation is 
nevertheless still relevant, like Ecuador, Panama, Colombia, and Costa Rica. We still have a couple of minutes left, but we're almost finished with our game. Now we have to guess the city. This is for a weighted medium 10 giga EIP transit prices in Latin America. Now let us try and guess the city. Over the past four years, OK, this is not growth. It's traffic. I'm thinking about traffic. So transit increased 50% in the past five years. The peak traffic was more than 3,000 gigabits per second in 2023. The second quarter of 2023 had a weighted medium price for 10 gigas. Port was 1.27 dollars per megabit per second in the second quarter. And this dropped 27% in the weighted medium price dropped 27% between 2020 and 2023. Who can guess? Guess the city. This was not so easy. I don't even recall. Okay, Panama City. This is strategically speaking. Now, geographically, this is also an interesting market because it is right at the center of everything. So connectivity in Panama is, with other places, is very high. And all the prices are dropping. There are several cities that are hubs. These are important cities. Now, in the Latin American region, and also with Latin America and other regions, prices can vary widely from one city to another. Now, typically in these markets, prices are higher compared to other places, for example, Brazil. In Brazil and Colombia, there we have prices that have dropped quite a lot over the past two to three years. And at present, for IP traffic, we see that prices are quite similar if we compare Brazil with cities in the United States and even with some European markets, uh, cities in the European market. Five years ago, this was quite different for connectivity in Latin America. Now, just to close, this is the map we showed before. And in the middle of the map, we see the content providers, Google, Microsoft. And he apologizes because the map isn't so visible. Map. They are investing quite a lot in cables and connectivity infrastructure. Very often this is quite different because this is for the customer's internal use, but nevertheless they contribute to the market because this increases the capacity of every network and also because there are there is more investment in infrastructure in those cities that provide connection. So this is an issue that was mentioned already in this Congress. The companies have been disruptive. This is something that is really bringing changes into the market because of the enormous scale. And we have also followed this. And according to our estimations, the impact of high-scale OTTs and this is quite a large bandwidth internationally. So let's see, this one over here is in dark blue. This shows that the content provider segment has been growing as internet backbone. So the, we still need the two, but there is more connectivity or there is more capacity on the side of these companies. And the same happens with the cloud. Some years ago, there was relative limited, relatively limited presence in the cloud in Latin America. But here we see the changes that have taken place. These are the cloud regions. Now with we have Microsoft, we have IBM. And 
we see how things are changing. We now have Chile, we have Colombia. There's a lot of interest on behalf of these companies to make investments on transport, on IP traffic. There is an increase in demand because there is a greater presence in these countries. Countries really have to be up to date with the notifications and the infrastructure. And the same happens with the data centers. This is just for Brazil. But I wanted to include this map to show you where we have the data centers in Brazil. And the same with IXPGB. We can see this in this map over here because this is one of the products that are for pay. This is the Internet Exchange map. It is a telegeography map. This shows you our presence in the different locations. In Belo Horizonte, I did follow up of this at random. And now this is how we view it. We've seen this several times. There are new cables that are coming to Latin America. This has always happened, but now we are in a new era where there is an increase in terms of capacity. So many companies are investing in infrastructure, and the more the capacity, this attracts competition. And this will continue to happen. IP transit is also becoming increasingly cheap. This is happening in most of the markets, and it's quite surprising because it occurred very rapidly over a short period of time. And the results lead to more traffic and for intra-regional traffic, like in Latin America. This is just to highlight that infrastructure in Latin America, investment in Latin America continues to occur. This is happening in the major markets like Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, but also in many other countries. So this is a very important point because whenever we see infrastructure, which used to be where infrastructure already existed, but now we see in secondary and tertiary markets that the time has come for investing more in these other types of markets. This is quite interesting. And so thank you very much, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for your attention. So who won the game, the guessing game? We can share a beer afterwards, so thank you, that was it. So